Okay, so we went over the quiz. Let's get started on our new stuff for today. We're going to talk about units of capacity. I want to talk about, first of all, the difference between capacity and volume. And it's a very, very subtle difference. Volume is found by taking length measurements. Like if I have a box and this is 10 inches by 6 inches by 4 inches, the volume is length times width times height. So that's going to give us 240 cubic inches. That's a volume. A volume is a length unit that's cubed. So we've got three measured lengths, three measured dimensions that are multiplied together to create the volume. Now a volume describes how much can be held within that object, or how much space is taken up by that object. Capacity describes the exact same thing, how much space is taken up by the object, only it's not found by doing lengths. It's actually set size containers. So again, capacity is measuring space. It's measuring how much can be held within that object. It's just not done in terms of lengths. So when we talk about capacity, I usually start out with the gallon for standard capacity. The gallon actually came, that was the standard size of a men's hat. Now I'm not talking about a cowboy hat, I'm talking about you know, the derby style, the dress hats that they wore in Europe um, back in the day. You heard the phrase 10 gallon hat? That was not a hat that held 10 gallons, it was just a really big hat. Um, like a cowboy hat was actually considered a 10 gallon hat because that was big compared to the normal hats they wore. One gallon. What's the next smaller unit? Quarts. There are four of them. The word quart comes from the word quarter. It's a quarter of a gallon. Smaller than a quart. What? Liter is metric. The liter is actually slightly bigger than a quart. Pints. How many pints in a quart? Two pints in a quart. Um, a pint was actually a uh, drinking glass or canning jar, a pint of beer. Um, you'd order a pint. Now, just like with feet and inches, you know, there weren't 12 inches in a foot, there were not two pints in a quart. The sizes of the, the pint and the gallon were adjusted. Um, the gallon we used is actually bigger than what it was back then. This was adjusted to make these units fit. Smaller than a pint, by the way, a little side note. Pint is abbreviated PT, quart is QT. In some type fonts, a Q and a P are the, look the same, just mirror images of each other. So be careful with them. It can be easy to, to mix those up. Smaller than a pint, we have a fluid ounce is down there, but the next one in line is the cup. One pint is two cups. A cup is literally your cupped hand like this. A cup was dry measure. So a cup and a pint, a pint was always liquid. It was usually a pint of beer. Um, the, the pint was always for liquids. The cup was dry measure. You'd, you'd take your cupped hand like that and flour, sugar, whatever you could hold in your hand, usually heaped up, that was a cup. I actually have a good friend of mine who's a caterer. And you know when she's baking and stuff and, and does that, she just uses her hand. And I've checked her a couple of times and it's almost dead on. It's amazing how how close that is. Smaller than a cup then is the fluid ounce. fluid ounce. One cup is how many fluid ounces? Eight. Nice try though. A fluid ounce originated as the weight or the the volume or capacity of one ounce of water. That's actually been adjusted. An ounce of water is not actually a fluid ounce anymore. Slightly, slightly off. Smaller than a fluid ounce. Two 
tablespoon. Anybody know how many tablespoons are in a fluid ounce? There are two. There are 16 tablespoons in a cup. There are two tablespoons in a fluid ounce. Smaller than a tablespoon? A teaspoon. How many teaspoons are in a tablespoon? Three. Just to mess you up. Side note here, acceptable abbreviations for tablespoon. TBSP, big TBSP, little TBSP. Big T or big TSP. Acceptable abbreviations for teaspoon. Little TSP or just little T. Currently, these are the most common ones, just the capital T and the little T, but you will see the others. And it, be careful because in this one it's really easy to look at this and see, think teaspoon because I'm used to seeing TSP for teaspoon. So just be very careful with those abbreviations. Now these next ones you don't need to write down. I'm putting them out there just for fun. But smaller than a teaspoon, one teaspoon contains two dashes. A dash was like a spice shaker, like the salt shaker, but a big salt shaker. You just took one quick dash, one tilt of the, the shaker with a dash. And what came out, that was a dash of spice. Smaller than a dash, anybody want to guess? A dash contained three pinches. And yes, you stuck your fingers in and pinched. And what stuck was between your fingers was a pinch of spice. Smaller than a pinch. Pinch contained two smidgens. A smidgen is one that kind of uh, disgusts me a little bit. Literally, the cook would stick their finger in the spice, and whatever stuck to their finger, they flicked off into the recipe. So the cook with sweaty fingers had big smidgens. <laughs> just something about that one just feels wrong to me. You want a lot of spice, you lick your finger first. I don't know. Um. I just wanted to put those out there. Those actually are measurements. And they are real. You can actually, you, if you go to a, a good cooking store, um, cooking store, go to a good cooking section of a store uh, that is, is really into it, you can actually find spoon, measuring spoons for a dash, a pinch, and a smidgen. Now we said that uh, both of these gallons, uh, Capacities and volumes were similar. So there is a relationship. Unfortunately, it's not a good relationship. It's very approximate. One gallon, notice I'm doing kind of a wavy equal sign. That's yeah, close to equal to or approximately equal to 231 cubic inches of volume. Now, one cubic foot, which is one foot by one foot by one foot. First of all, do you think it's bigger or smaller than a gallon? Smaller. Cubic foot? Cubic foot is bigger than a gallon. Now, five-gallon bucket. You know, think, you know, a foot is, you know, this long by this long by that long, you know, cubic foot. Um, think of a five-gallon bucket. Is a five-gallon bucket bigger or smaller than a cubic foot? Considerably smaller. One cubic foot. The bottom is only eight inches. The top is what, nine or something like that? One cubic foot is actually 7.48 gallons. About 7.5 gallons, roughly. So yeah, that five-gallon bucket is only two-thirds of a cubic foot. It just, it's a little bit taller than a foot, so it feels like it should be bigger than a cubic foot, but it's not. There are other units in here, um, smaller or bigger than a gallon, I should say. One peck. That's just P-E-C, not P-E-C-K. One peck is two gallons. 
You ever heard, you know, Peter Piper picked a pack of pickled peppers? That's a pack. If you actually go to a, go to the strawberry patch and you buy strawberries, they've got those kind of cardboard trays. You know, those are one pack and two pack trays. Bigger than a pack. Then a bushel is eight gallons. Do you want to know how big a barrel is? How many gallons in a barrel? 24. 24, no. Usually people say 55. 55 is a drum. 1.5. These, uh, if you're ever bought a keg of beer or whatever, a half barrel is just under 16 gallons. It's actually 15 and three quarter gallons. That's actually a quarter barrel usually. That's seven and seven eighths. And of course, those conversions work like all of our other conversions. But you can see this relationship between volume and capacity is really ugly. Like all the other conversions in the standard system, it's really ugly. They were forced to work together. In the metric system, the unit, the only unit of capacity they use is the liter. By the way, get used to seeing it spelt like that. That's the European spelling, but it's catching on and getting more use. Yeah, that one. I was always taught that leader had to be abbreviated with a capital L. The reason for that was when I was in middle school learning the metric system, a lot of your typewriters, the small L and the one were indistinguishable. In fact, if you go way back before my time on the mechanical typewriters, a lot of the mechanical typewriters didn't even have a one key on them. They just used a small L for one. Now with the modern typefaces, the, the L and the 1 are different, so you can use a small L. I just use a capital L just to be clear. Because if I write, I don't want you to ask, is that 51 or is that 5 liters? Now it's clear that's 5 liters. Just like with length, we have deci liters, that's DL. Centiliters is CL. Milliliters is ml. Then we skip. We don't do the ten thousandths or hundred thousandths. We skip to the millionths, which is the microliters. You can keep going through more to get to nanoliters, but we'll stop at micro. Dal is decaliters. That's ten liters. Hl is a hectoliter. That's a hundred liters. And Kl is a kiloliter. That is a thousand liters. And then we can keep going up to mega. This this year or centiliters? No, after centimeters is the milliliters. So yep. the last one you have micro. Is that a capital M or is that a lower? System? This is a capital M here for megaliters. Mm -hmm. This is a small M for milli. What about the other side? This one micro. That's a mu. Oh, weird, mu yeah. Right it's micros that spell up that. That's that, yeah, like that, that little weird U with the leg on it. Or in the medical field, it's sometimes abbreviated MCL. M MC for micro. The only reason there's the medical fields is one of the first fields to have to, to keyboard everything into a computer. And there is no mu key on the keyboard. And rather than having to go through a copy and paste symbol process, they just use MC to make it quick to type it in. You guys in the automotive field or the welding field probably will never see microliters. Now just like with length, not all these units were really used. We talked about in the length that the meter is used, the kilometer is used. Hecto and deci are almost never used. The same with liters are almost never used. 
um, for meters, millimeters was used. In the U.S., centimeters was used quite a bit just because it was close to an inch and we're so ingrained with the inch. Centiliters are almost never used. Deciliters are seldom used, but they are used in the medical field. Uh, if you've ever had a blood test or cholesterol checked or blood sugar checked or whatever, if they tell you that your blood sugar is 90, what that is is 90 milligrams of glucose per deciliter of blood. So that's a tenth of a liter that they're using, they're testing it against. So that's not used much, but it is used. So the main ones are the main unit, the liter, the milliliter, and the kiloliter isn't that popular. Usually the kiloliter is like 270 gallons. So it's getting a little big. We talked about in the standard system how it was really an awkward relationship between volume and capacity. So the one gallon being 231 cubic inches or one cubic foot being 7.48 gallons. We, as we mentioned, when they, they created the metric system, they were trying to get rid of many of those issues. And here's where they did deal with that. They defined one milliliter to be one centimeter cubed. In other words, it's a cube that's one centimeter by one centimeter by one centimeter. And because of that, you can measure out dimensions and calculate a volume and very quickly convert it into a capacity. Let's say you have uh, an engine cylinder that has, oh, let's see here. Let's say it has, the piston has an area of 60 square centimeters. And it has a stroke, let's say it's got an 8 inch stroke. The displacement, in, and let's, uh, let's go ahead and call it a six cylinder motor. So the displacement of each cylinder is the volume of the cylinder. It's the, the area of the head of the piston times the length of the stroke. So 60 square centimeters times 8. Why did I put 8 inches there? That should be 8 centimeters. I think I said centimeters and wrote inches, didn't I? So 60 square centimeters times 8 centimeters is 480 centimeters cubed times six cylinders is 2,880 centimeters cubed, right? Well, 2,880 centimeters cubed is how many milliliters? So remember, one milliliter is one centimeter cubed. So, 2,880. A centimeter, a cubic centimeter is a milliliter. So if it's 2,880 cubic centimeters, it's 2,880 milliliters. How many liters would that be? Well, for milliliters, liters is one, two, three spots to the left. One, two, three spots to the left. That's a 2.88 liter motor. What do you think? Pretty, pretty simple. <clears throat> so you see some of the motorcycles that have 1500 cc motors. 1500 cc, you know what cc stands for? Cubic centimeter. So 1,500 cc is 1,500 cubic centimeters, which is 1,500 milliliters, which is 1.5 liters. Well, some of your small four-cylinder cars, what was it, the, the Geo had the 1.2 liter or 1.3 liter? 1.2 liter and 1.3 liter. Yep. So, yeah, the, a lot of those motorcycles have a bigger motor in them than some of those small cars do. 
I know 1.4 is still pretty common, isn't it, for a four cylinder? 1.4 they do with the turbo and carry column for a lot of manufacturers with Volkswagen and, okay. and Dodge Star. It's actually very popular right now with the Okay. It'll last in a long, a lot longer than what people expected them to. Sure. It's such a small motor. So yeah. And I've never been a big yeah, fan of. I've never been a big fan of turbocharging a motor, but at least not in cold weather. Well, I mean, it's, it's good to have components in a small motor so that they'll absorb. I think they've improved on them since my my experience was back in the '90s when yeah, so the turbos cool. would freeze up or they'd blow out, and it was a huge expense. I know that there was a problem. It was really cold. The turbo would actually freeze. I don't know how it would freeze, but and then when it got hot, they would overheat. And well, those were uh, back in the day. They were uh, water cooled. Probably through the coolant system. Yep. And when it isolated the outside of the radiator, that small amount of coolant it has a lot lower freezing, freezing rate. That makes sense. Then the Bless you. Volume of coolant that is in the radiator or in the engine block. Sure. So that makes sense being yeah, isolated. Yeah, little small strands of coolant they can freeze a lot or turn to slush. And that slush yep. is very bad for uh, lubrication. Yep. And that's probably what happened. Probably just had to go. That makes sense. I know the old turbos were horrible and they would go out and they were expensive to fix and that, uh, the, the turbo trans in. Yeah. Part of the turbo trans horrible. Horrible. They put giant turbos on it, but it was just I think so. But it was the most inefficient design ever. Sure. Yeah. It almost limited the car because it had to work off the turbo. Yep. You know. Okay. Because the original stage scroll was just a, a bar that went in the middle to keep both of the turbines aligned. Okay. Well, at 35 psi, it starts it goes shimmy, back, yeah. It starts to shimmy, and any shimmy is fine. Yep. So that makes not, sense. Not that I know anything about turbocharging. I can tell you've done some research. You know a lot more about them than I do. Um, so on that packet, page 238, 43 to 50. And 265, 41 to 48, deal with conversions and units of capacity. Well, I know they've turbocharged diesels for Ever. decades, and they don't have too many problems with those. So I always wondered why it was so it's such a so different to turbocharge a gas motor, but because um, gas burns that much hotter. Or? Diesel has a lot more back pressure. Oh, that makes sense. 